back in the garage, making uh, making some headway on the old Rambler project. Uh, last night I decided to come out here, filmed a little bit of it. I'll put some clips in now. Um, I wanted to uh, kind of pre-game taking off one of these fenders, and uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I posted. Um, uh, in 1964, I really think that they put these fenders on with the sole purpose of no one ever taking them off again. <laughs> I mean, it's nuts. Uh, the amount, like, they're, like my dad was making a joke, too, that uh, some of the import cars and stuff like that that I've worked on, like, they put bolts and stuff in the fenders, but there's also, like, you know, sometimes you get one of those cars that has, like, the plastic snaps underneath, uh, and you just pop those plastic snaps out, and it kind of loosens the fender or the bumper or whatever it might be, but... This is literally all just hard bolted in. Literally a bunch of bolts everywhere. Uh, I mean, if I had to count off the top of my head, there's probably five on the top, two in the front that are hidden, one underneath, one underneath the side where the door is, two in the door, one on the top of the door from the outside in, and then, and then it was, I don't know if somebody did this, because I know that the car's been repainted at some point, but it was spot welded at the bottom of the fender, basically where the the uh, rocker panel at the bottom of the car, where that meets the fender, it was spot welded at the bottom. I mean, and I had to cut it off with a grinding wheel and all that kind of shit, but uh, yeah, I mean, nuts, nuts. I gotta take the other side off today, but uh, I'll try to film a little bit more of that. But man, it was it was tough getting that fender off. I mean, it took a lot of time. Uh, and then I was kind of also sidetracked too. I mean, my wife was out here wrapping Christmas gifts and just hanging out with me. And then uh, I also started looking at the drill press and I just started like cleaning up parts on the, on the drill press. Um, but anyway, uh, we're gonna get back into the Rambler today. Uh, I wanna take the other side fender off. Then I kind of want to assess the the engine bay um obviously the goal is to paint the engine bay um and put the motor back in it and everything like that but we still have a lot of work to do on like fabbing stuff up for the engine so what i think i'm going to do is get the whole front end disassembled get the fenders off uh the front bumper's already off get that front grill piece out um and then it's just going to be a bare engine bay um i think i'm going to wheel it outside it's it hasn't been super cold out so i think maybe if i do it this week uh i could probably pick up the front end of the car with the engine hoist and then wheel it out with the back wheels and uh then i can pressure wash the whole engine bay i'll put like some purple power or something i'll spray the whole engine bay down with it uh even the fender wells and everything like that we'll spray it all down with like a degreaser or a cleaner and uh pressure wash the crap out of it get all that dirt uh, get any kind of heavy grease or anything out, uh, and then we'll we'll uh, wheel it back in the garage, and I think we're gonna put the motor back in it. Um, this car is going to get put together and disassembled a couple more times, at least the front end is. So for the time being, um, the subframe hasn't been cleaned or painted or anything yet. So I think for the time being. We're going to leave the subframe the way it is, just raw steel and dirty. Maybe I'll pressure wash it at the same time as I pressure wash the engine bay. And um, we'll just have it clean so it's not like filthy when we're working on it. We'll drop the motor back in. I have to remake the transmission mount because it's just god awful. Um, I want to remake the transmission mount. Um, I made like a really shitty one before I started making these videos. Um, just to try and get like a ballpark of how the engine and transmission are going to sit. Uh, but I want to remake it now, um, now that I, uh, have a little bit more time to mess with the car. So, um, we're going to, uh, start doing that. I just wanted to show you guys real quick, just to take this hardware off, to get this fender off and the front bumper, just to get that off, all these stuff right here, I needed all of these tools. <laughs> And I laid them all out like this just to show how much stuff I needed to do it. I mean, it's pretty nuts the way that they've got them mounted on there. Uh, if you look at, I'll try and show you real quick, sorry about the lighting, but I'll try to show you that 
this front grill has two bolts uh, right here that hold the front part of the fender on and right here at the top that hold the fender on to this grill. Um, so, I mean, in order to get to these, you have to put a tool through the grill here to get to the other side of the bolt. And it's just, uh, I mean, it took way more time than it needed to. I did throw some clips in, I think. I haven't edited this yet, obviously, but I'm throwing some clips in um, when I'm talking to you about taking the fender off. I'll throw some clips in on, on the driver's side. Don't know if I'm gonna show too much of the passenger side. Um, maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll take a couple clips, but uh, let's get into it anyway. I forgot to press record on that, but I just had to cut a spot weld underneath the car like I did on the other side, but I forgot to press record. I think I'm gonna take off this fender and the grill all in one piece. It'll make, I think it'll make taking the grill off easier, but it might also make it to where I bend the grill. I think I'm just gonna take it off in one piece. It'll be easier to take it apart. I'm gonna have to mess with the grill anyway. It's all bent, so. Yeah, we'll just take it off in one piece. In these wheel wells, there's uh, two basically like uh, dust covers, I would assume. I, I wouldn't say they're inspection covers because they're not covering anything that needs to be inspected. Uh, it honestly just looks like it's supposed to keep dirt out um, and, and just keep the elements out from behind the fender and from uh, in the frame rail here inside the, the fender well. Uh, I took off both inspection covers on the, uh, the driver's side, so I planned on doing the same thing on the passenger side. I know for sure um, I'm going to put one of the dust covers back, but the other one I'm thinking about leaving out and I'll explain to you why. So this, uh, this dust cover right here is the one I think I'm going to put back. Um, when you take it off, you can see uh, inside the frame rail here, and it is already packed with dirt when I take these off. Uh, I could show the driver's side, or I'm, I'm about to take this one off too, so I could show that. But uh, that one's definitely gonna go back. I'm gonna take it off, clean it all up, paint it, uh, or powder coat it, whatever, and uh, put it back. Um, the one I'm going to take off and leave off is going to be this one right here. Um, you can see this big rubber piece here. Uh, I'm going to take this cover off and I'm gonna leave it off. Um, reason why is because this rubber seal here that sits up against the fender, you know, this edge of the seal sits up against the fender and it seals off this backside uh, of the fender well um, under the fender. So um, the reason why I'm going to take it off and leave it off is because as you can see, um, over time it's failed anyway and there's still you know, dirt and grime and rust building up behind the fender anyway. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, leave it off and I might drill a couple small holes under the fender right here. So that way if any water does get behind the fender uh, it'll drain out through the drain holes at the bottom. Um, it's, uh, oh shoot, uh, 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 uh. like some people might be like, oh, it's kind of stupid, just put the cover back on, but I mean, I don't even know how I would remake this rubber, because I mean, it's it's not good anymore. It's basically just dried out, cracking, um, ripped in, in certain spots. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it off. Um, plus it's got like a metal plate on it, so it's a little bit of a race weight reduction. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the way that I'll, I'll do it is going to be uh, more than more than enough to uh, keep the rust and the uh, the dirt to uh, to a minimum. And then, if anything, if I if I ever need to clean the car, I could pressure wash back there and blow out anything that's uh, built up back there, and then the water will drain through the drain holes. So, 
Yeah, I just wanted to explain that real quick. I've taken the, uh, I've taken the inspection cover off. Uh, this is basically what it looks like when it's off. Um, it sits into this slot like this. Um, this side's actually surprisingly clean compared to the driver's side, but I'll show you the driver's side real quick. You can see in the driver's side, it's still packed with dirt and grime and all that kind of shit. So I think uh, this would be best to have that inspection cover or dust cover uh, installed back on it. So we're definitely gonna put that one back. All right, just wanted to take a second to clean up. I'm trying to like do something specific, like a job or something, like take the fenders off, and then I'm trying to like consolidate all the tools onto the workbench so I can put them away, sweep up, because obviously everything I take off the car right now is just dirt and mud and grime. So been trying to like keep up after that and uh, make that like a habit to just clean up. It only takes me like a minute or two to just straighten up real quick after I get done with something simple, like taking the fenders off or whatever, and picking up all the tools so that way I can like, just keep being productive, I guess, so. Um, anyway, uh, both fenders are off, and um, we're, uh, we're ready to move on to something else. Uh, yeah, the fenders are, were a beast. The, I mean, the passenger side came off significantly easier than the driver's side, um, but, uh, but yeah, man, it was uh, it was tough getting all that stuff off, but um, we, we got it off. Um, one fender's in worse shape than the other one. Um, the driver's side fender's got more raw on it, uh, but the paint on the passenger side fender is worse than the driver's side fender, so I think both of them are gonna take an equal amount of body work and prep to get them straight and clean for paint. But uh, yeah, so... Um, let me just show you real quick what we got going on, and then, uh, and then uh, maybe we'll move on to something else real quick. As I said, fenders are off, uh, both driver's side and passenger side fender, and then the grill right there, uh, and then the bumper, <clears throat> which was actually kind of a beast to take off too because it was just everything so rusted on. I'm going to have to replace all the hardware on the bumper, and I'm not really sure... Uh, Getting stuff re-chromed isn't really something that's like super popular anymore. Uh, not that there aren't businesses out there chroming stuff, but the price to do it, from what I understand, is significantly more than it used to be. So we might end up painting those. So I don't know for sure, but we'll figure it out later. Um, we're so far away from that. But uh, yeah, so I mean, the car looks kind of silly with nothing on the front of it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just swept up over here. It was a whole pile of dust and dirt right here. Um, you can see how uh, dirty everything is on here. But uh, we, um, the plan is now, I guess, to take it out, take it outside. Maybe we'll strip off some more stuff from the engine bay. Um, we got to take that wiper, uh, the vacuum wiper motor off, and we got to take the uh, steering box out, and we'll probably take the. Um, steering column out as well uh, and then we'll get these hood hinges off 
Um, and then literally the engine bay will be completely empty and ready for us to put the motor back in and make some modifications. Uh, one thing that I know I'm going to end up having to do is once we get the motor back in and uh, we're patching up some of the holes in the engine bay and getting the thing ready to mount a turbo and all that kind of stuff, um, we're going to have to put stuff in back in like the steering box um, and certain things that are going to end up being in the way. Uh, but you know, we've got some, some time before we get to that point, but yeah, so we're going to have to get some more stuff out of the engine bay here. Um, and we're going to have to start ordering some parts at some point. Uh, we've got time for that as well, but you know, I'm going to need to get a radiator and an intercooler so I can start fitting up how it's all going to work here in the front. Um, I'm thinking I want to do hood pins anyway, uh, because it will clear up some room if I just get rid of this uh, latch and um, we just get some hood pins. So I think I'm honestly just going to cut this off here and cut it down uh, at the bottom and then we'll have a big open square there for an intercooler and radiator. Uh, and yeah, so that won't be too bad. So I know I keep bouncing back and forth from the weld table to looking at the car and looking at the parts and stuff, but I've got like a lot of thoughts going on in my head for this video. Oh. <laughs> Any of that just made sense but like to summarize um, I might turn a 55 gallon two 55 gallon drums into a powder coating oven I need to get a sandblast cabinet I want to buy a powder coating setup I'm probably gonna buy a cheap one from like Eastwood or something and I want to powder coat my suspension parts that need to go back on the car we're a while away from that because I still like I said I still need to fab up uh, stuff for the engine bay and I'd like to do that before I paint the engine bay and stuff like that so I could avoid scratching it. And then we'll tear everything back out, paint the engine bay nice and beautiful, and then put everything back in knowing that it's it's set and ready to go. Um, wow, that was really long-winded. I honestly don't even know if any of that made sense. Uh, sorry. To be totally honest with you guys, I have no idea how this comes off, so I'm just kind of winging it right now. I'm hoping this shaft is uh, clamped in here with these bolts from the top and bottom. And then we just unbolt the uh, the box here and then just slide it out. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, shit. See if this works. Okay. Okay, that's not it. Oh, I think we got it. I think we got it, folks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cabs are here. All right. So my original thought was wrong. <laughs> it was not clamped at the end. Uh, in fact, it is one entire long shaft. I mean, <laughs> it's gigantic. Uh, in like modern cars, like my, uh, my RX-7s, my RX-8s and stuff, which I mean, I know it's different, but like there's like heim joints and stuff. So I figured maybe it might've been clamped at the, at the end of the uh, steering column, but I was very, very wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool though. Um, That'll, uh, that'll be good because I think I'm going to do an episode on rebuilding that thing. So, uh, I got really lucky because obviously my car's pretty rusty, but I, uh, went to go take off the, all the steering components when I was doing the front suspension and completely stripped, uh, basically it was all rusted shut, but we completely stripped the, uh, this shaft right here. This shaft is completely ruined. 
on the steering box now, but my buddy Ty gave me a whole new steering, uh, whole new steering box, uh, and it's all still together. So I'm hoping that we could maybe combine parts from both of them and uh, get one good uh, steering box um, rebuilt, and um, we'll just rebuild it with uh, like fresh gaskets and pack it full of grease. See if there's any bearings we can buy to if there's anything in there that we need to replace. See if we can buy it. If not, we'll try and make it work and pack it full of grease. And uh, yeah, but I'm glad that Ty came through with all those parts because if not, I'd be kind of screwed. So it's good that we have that stuff. All right, now we're gonna try and take off this uh, wiper motor. A little impatient for all that jazz. so much faster. It's like they designed it for that. Okay. All right, okay. So I don't want to totally um, just break this off because the plan is to like use this plate again and maybe maybe retrofit like a motor in or like a, you know, like a newer or something. I could probably get like a like a really small motor from somewhere. This vacuum thing is just not gonna cut it, especially because if I apply boost to the motor and I'm running a vacuum line without like a check valve or something, I'll just annihilate this thing. But, uh, plus it's just, it probably doesn't work anymore, to be honest. There's a lot of movement going on outside. Look at the freaking mess in here, man. It's not quite focusing, but look at it. Look at that mess. Look at all that. Look at all this mess right here. Just built up in here. Here's the old vacuum motor. Um, it's only riveted on, if you could see. It's riveted on both sides. I'm thinking I can cut those rivets off and get this motor off, right? And then I could probably cut this bracket off, right? And then reuse it for the, the arm that goes in for the wipers. We could use that and then we'll somehow retrofit a motor onto here and use the stock plate and everything so it looks, you know, factory. Uh, or at least, you know, it'd be convenient to use it so it just bolts right up, but I think we can definitely make that happen. So we're gonna put this over in the corner and, and hold on to it till then. All right, I think I'm done uh, for today. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Uh, I got the entire front end of the Rambler completely disassembled. So literally there's nothing left in here to take apart. I mean, uh, we got uh, everything out of it from the uh, windshield wiper uh, motor, the steering shaft and the steering box is gone, both front fenders, front bumper, grill, Everything's out of the thing now. Um, pretty much all that there's left to do is to cut this off, but I'm going to wait to see uh, exactly how it's going to work out with the intercooler and the radiator and everything. But that is all cut out. Um, final thoughts on everything is we're going to be retrofitting this plate, this backing plate that bolts into the firewall. We're going to retrofit this plate with a new motor uh, so we can continue to have wipers. Um, all this is going to get back uh, installed on the car. These are just fender brackets. Um, the hood hinges there. Uh, those are going to get cleaned up and painted, obviously. Uh, and then I have all the bags of hardware. And these are all the tools I used. Um, interesting side note. I've had these Dewalt uh, impact and drill kit. I've had it for a few years now. It's been my go-to, but I, I recently um, upgraded. Actually, when I got my job at the Structural Steel Place, I took these to the shop and I left these here at home and uh, I was just struggling getting <laughs> the hardware off for the hood hinges with the DeWalt uh, so I was just like just out of curiosity before I go get the hand tools let me try and do the Milwaukee and the Milwaukee broke it loose like like it was nothing so uh, pretty cool I might do like a little uh, comparison between the two since I've had the DeWalt for so long and been using the Milwaukee stuff now 
Um, I'm really digging the Milwaukee stuff. But uh, let's wrap up this video and uh, maybe some plans for the next one. Who knows? All right, that's a wrap for this video. Um, I think the next one, uh, I'm going to try and pull the car out. This is gonna, it's going to be pretty sketchy. I'm going to try and pull the car out with the engine hoist just basically mounted to the bumper, uh, basically the bumper support. And we're going to try and drag it out on the back wheels because the rear end is still in the car. I'll probably air up the tires uh, and it should be rolling fine. Um, but we'll just jack it up with that hoist and see if we can pull the whole car out of the garage so I can pressure wash that engine bay. Uh, and at the same time, we'll be taking a look at those front suspension parts and we'll uh, get those nice and clean and get those um, uh, pressure washed as well because they've been sitting in that tank for a year, <laughs> literally. Since I, well, I mean, maybe a little less than a year, but a long time. Um, they're If they're gonna be clean, they're about as clean as they're gonna get from just soaking. Uh, I think they need maybe one more scrubbing uh, and then a good pressure washing and uh, we'll be all set there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the tools away, uh, maybe prepare for the next video, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. I really appreciate you guys been watching. I got a couple comments. Uh, everything's been great. Um, I'm really excited to be back in this, and I hope that you guys uh, share, like, subscribe, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, keep watching. We're going to get some cool stuff going soon. Um, didn't mean to drag this one out. Uh, it might be a little boring for some people, but hey, man. Uh, I got I got to do the work, so I figure I might as well film it. But anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. I really appreciate it again. See you on the next one.